I wanted a roof, but instead I've got a swimming pool and a hole in my tarp. Good morning guys, I've been running around the last few days. Oh sugar, look my roof's gone as well. Oh no, just one panel, that's good. It is definitely a journey of ups and downs, it's like two steps forwards, one step back. Hopefully not one step forwards, two steps back. But the good news is, the composting toilet is finished. <laughs> I finished off the sides with some wood from the pub. I went out with Louis recently and I bought myself these from the charity shop for 12 quid. And hopefully that will get you all off my back about wearing townie shoes in the woods. Of all the things I thought I might get criticised for in doing this project, I did not think it was going to be my shoes. I guess everything in Corcovado at the moment is kind of version one. You know, this is version one of a hut and we didn't even sort of make it from scratch. This is version one of the roof, version one of the composting toilet, and version one of the garden. But actually it's not version one of the garden, this is version two with the beams. And so now I need to move to version three, because that hasn't worked. I need to make a bit of a tweak to this, but I'm hoping this one doesn't go wrong. I'm going to put some extra support on this, so it doesn't happen again. Do you like my new uh, time lapse stick? <laughs> All the modern technology here. It really is a shame I haven't figured out how to harness all that water yet. One thing I haven't properly showed you guys yet is my first mini solar panel, which if you follow this cable through, goes into here, which is, this shows that it's charging, which is sick. And then, boom, lights, and all important, USB power. So I don't have to go to the pub to charge my phone or, or cameras anymore. That is version one solar panels up and running. All right guys, look, this is the man. He's called Andrew. He looks cool, but he's actually a wise old owl and knows a lot of stuff. Don't stop, keep coming. <laughs> so you better suck up his knowledge whilst he's here. I need to get some gear like Andrew. Yeah, he's to, looking look good, yeah. looking fresh. In full forest mode. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, and three axes. Yeah, I've got more in the car. Really? <laughs> I've only got the one heffalump. Yeah. Am I leaving the heffalump? Leave that. It's funny because um, I only really take people for walks in the woods. Yeah. I don't really come, I haven't sort of sat out here and done any work yet. I kind of go back around the hut really, so this is cool. That's why I like to do it, because it gives you a reason to sit still in the woods. Mostly in the woods, people kind of walk through it. Interesting. Like, when we've come to this through sort of hiking and camping and stuff like that, and we find that it's very goal orientated. So it's numbers of miles height or trying to bag a certain number of peaks or summits. And I think for me, what's more important is the things that you see on the way, kind of slowing down a little bit. Exactly. It's really nice because it gives you the opportunity to just sort of sit down in one spot. Mm. Um, we find that if you do that, then kind of nature comes to you. The goal today, guys, is to make something like this spoon unreal from something like that. I mean, I'm not sure how my spoon's going to look, but it's worth a go. Doesn't matter, man. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's more about the process than the end, uh, end object. Mode. Absolutely. Amen. So these are called wildlife hatchets. Okay. They're made by a company called Grantsers Brooks, a Swedish company. Uh, they're all hand forged. Ideal for carving, but also really useful for loads of other stuff in the woods. Brilliant. So there you go. That's Cheers, mate. Tool for the day. What, what's this wood for? So we're going to put some dry dead wood down on the ground to help insulate uh, the tinder that we're going to put on top of it. This will be our tinder. So oh, that's a lot better than the tinder I know. Yeah. Tinder I know is much more <laughs> annoying than that. What does the logo mean? So the logo is something that I picked up from. It's like a reoccurring shape that I use in all my illustration work, so that's kind of our logo. Okay. Then we've got this is the M and A for Miss Lane's Adventure. Ah. Designed. And then these wavy lines represent the ocean. So Very surfing cool. is something that got me into this. All right, this is my spoon, guys. <laughs> oh, that looks cool, doesn't it? All the wood that we use sort of comes from something. We don't kind of chop a tree down just to make a spoon. We're going to be working from one side of this pith. Ah, okay. So Why? The pith is very soft. In ah, the okay. So quite spongy 
Um, and we don't want that in a spoon or a cup or anything. So let's go for a nice big spoon. Let's go for a deep spoon. Yeah, yeah, a deep exactly. spoon. Very Everybody good. loves a deep yeah, spoon, yeah. mate. Very good. <laughs> you have the outer bark, which yeah. is the one we can see. Then there's another layer in there called the inner bark or yeah. the phloem. Yeah. Phloem, yeah. Then the phloem transports the um, sugars and nutrients gained from photosynthesis up and down the tree. Every year it's putting on uh, another growth ring. Okay. You can see here, so that's why we've got these, yeah. these circles here. Literally so many layers. Yeah, absolutely, loads of layers. <laughs> Boom! As Andrew pointed to me, you can see the pith all the way through the middle. I think this one's going to be my spoon. What is your Instagram? My Instagram is at misc underscore adventures. Misc underscore adventures, it will be in the description. Yes. Check them out, they have very nice photos of all this stuff. I'm quite pleased with that, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, you should be, man. It's good. That is a next level manoeuvre. Made out of cherry? Yeah. By cherry. your own fair hands? By my own fair hands. <laughs> Look at those hands, people. <laughs> I will probably never get to this standard, but who knows? Enough days out here, am I? You're a good looking man, I must sure say. around this, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going for the very technical um, design method of, of drawing round the other spoon. Yep. So Perfect. That's just gonna give us it looks like somebody before. killed a spoon. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so this is going to be my little kit now, thanks to Andrew, for sorting myself out on an ongoing basis so I can make spoons and fires. It's beginning to look like a 2D spoon. It is getting there. So we're looking now to work on the back and we yep. want to get the, the, this to be thinner than the bowl. That's right. Right, okay. A little curve in here. Okay. So I'm almost there. Yep, I'm almost there, mate. <laughs> so you can afford to be... Aggressive. Fairly aggressive, yeah. Got the handle. Now I've got to cut out the back. The other way, and eventually... Ah, oh, so satisfying to watch. That is actually looking more like a spoon now than anything else. But what I can't believe is that we're still using the axe to cut this down. We're not on some poxy knife or something. No. This is serious... Agility from the axe. Yeah, it's a very versatile tool. There's yeah. a hill in the landscape. You can only carve down it. If you okay. were to try and carve up it, we'd split this piece of wood off here. And that works on all planes. So if we turn it this way, you can only carve from here down or okay. from here down. We're going to use the whole blade. Nice. Go all the way down to the tip like this. Okay. And we're going to get left with a nice clean oh, finish. It is so of. satisfying to watch. Do one more nice and close without chopping me up. Oh. The idea is to keep the blade in contact oh, with the material as much as possible. This is so satisfying to do and watch. It feels fantastic. It's actually looking a lot better than I thought it would. I've done 90% of this as well. Right. It's looking beautiful. I've kind of leveled that guy off. Look I mean, that. it does look like a spoon. Yeah, man. <laughs> this is a crook knife or a spoon knife, as mm -hmm. I've been told. So this is for scooping out the bowl. It's important that you don't come into your thumb, so make sure it's hooked well out of the way. And the basic action is oh, like yeah. this. Open like the potato peeler like earlier. The potato peeler. We're going to start in the middle and gradually work our way out. This is good preparation for so when like I plant this. potatoes in January. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, I like it already. I'm going to come straight across and oh. gradually bring that out. Ah, oh. why is it so satisfying to watch? <laughs> it's unbelievable. I hope you guys are getting this, because I am <laughs> Loving watching this. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Nice. Oh yeah, you're feels, a natural. Feels so good. Right, it started chucking it down, so I'm getting there with the spoon. But we've put up the older uh, tarp, so we don't get drenched in the meantime. From the top, I'm very proud of that and the bowl. Admittedly, it looks a bit like a rock formation from the side and the back, but that is a straight up spoon. No one can take that away from me. Let's see it compared. Okay, no, okay. Well, that is next level, but it's got, I've got something to look forward to. Right, that is pretty much it, guys. Me and Andrew will be doing some more stuff together. We will, you will see him again at some point. Um, and I'm thinking at the moment about how to be able to put a retreat on for you guys. So some of you can come here and actually experience Corcovado. We can't have everyone, but it's, I think it needs to involve some bits like this. This is a really good way to sit and be with nature a bit more. Anyway. I will see you next Thursday, 9pm. Look after yourselves. I throw it all down and I'll give it all up.